Hello, hello, hello. Nate here again with the Volunteer Tech Vlog on the Live Sound 101 YouTube channel. Ooh, today is November 21st, 2015, and I'm headed back from the church. We just had a, uh, a really productive rehearsal. And so I wanted to, uh, I didn't write anything down this time because I was running around uh, plugging things in and looking for adapters and we were trying all kinds of new things today uh, that all circle around uh, in-ear monitors. So we're doing like proofs of concept and trying just, you know, get different things to work and experimenting with different configurations. And um, so I don't have anything written down, so I'm just going to go all off the top of my head. But um, so today we had Josh and Kate um, singing and we had Josh on guitar and we had Andrew play bass and then we had Wesley show up uh, who's an audio tech in training and Tim show up who's an audio tech in training and so um, it was really good to have you know a full team of people to kind of work together and uh, just just focus on the audio and trying to get it to sound as good as it possibly can sound and um, what we did today was um, in a previous video I talked about setting up a return channel for um, an in-ear monitor but like a hardwired in-ear monitor not a wireless so we've got um, some spare outputs from our software audio console so I just borrowed a couple of the, uh, the snake lines channels 25 and 26 and I basically put a little XLR uh, what they call gender changer right so it's a XLR um, male the male adapter and we've got an XLR female the female adapter so basically it allows you to um, just it's, it's a little barrel about this this big that sits at the end of a cable so you can basically take an output and make it an input or take an input and make it an output so anyway I took uh, two of those put them on the uh, snake lines 25 and 26 and made them into outputs so I fed them from uh, from our Behringer ADA 8200 and sent those as return line level right back down to the stage. And now the reason I did that was because at first I just had one channel, channel uh, dedicated for that, and that was channel 26. And that was great when it was just going into a little mono powered speaker. But if we want to do in-ear monitors and have a left and right headphone, um, we need two channels, a left and a right. Even though we're running a mono mix, we're, um, we're running uh, everything's mono, so nothing's panned left or right. But even even though we've got a mono mix, it's it's really weird to have uh, as a musician to have an in-ear monitor with just the left or just the right. So anyway, set up those two physical lines, and me being the creative uh, audio person I am, saw the uh, little Furman headphone amplifier sitting up on the control desk. I said, huh, what if that was sitting down there on the stage? So we ran, uh, we, we unplugged that, we, we brought it down to the front of the stage, we rested it up on top of a speaker that wasn't plugged in anything just because we needed like a little shelf or a stand to, to put this thing on. Because uh, we're trying new things and experimenting. Maybe at some point we get like a little rack shelf to keep up on stage there. If we want to go this route, which really, again, this is a proof of concept. So essentially, we had that return line set up feeding the uh, Furman uh, headphone amp and then we had our musicians just plug their headphones right into that the headphone amp. Now the problem was we didn't have the right adapters handy so you need like uh, the Furman uh, headphone amplifier it's like a distribution amp so you, you, you plug in a stereo left and right and then it gives you six places to plug in six sets of headphones and you have uh, individual volume control uh, just the master volume of each of those so it's the same mix going to six people which for in-ears you kind of want to have your own mix um, you want to have discrete mixes and ability to have your own mix across maybe six mixes or something like that um, we didn't have that again we're just kind of playing around with what we've got and seeing if it works and um, <clears throat> so we ran into some problems with uh, not having the right adapters, but we still use that setup for bass. So we gave um, Andrew on the bass, we gave him his own physical line for in-ear monitors, and then Josh and Kate, we uh, we gave, ended up giving them their own little wireless body packs just because we didn't have the right length of uh, adapter cables and just adapters. So I think what we really want is some like really slim, lightweight 
uh, cables that maybe can be wired up to their mic stand and then they can just come in with their you know own in-ears and plug them in there at the mic stand that might be the way to go but um anyway that was that was kind of like the main thing that we were focused on today the other big thing is when we were playing with bass we've had issues with the bass sounding um, having a really loud buzz and being really noisy and um, so we learned something pretty interesting today when we took the amp out of the equation it's always really good to simplify things when you're you're having uh, problems with noise and you're not sure what's happening I mean there's so many it could be the noisy pickups in the bass it could be um, a pedal that you know has a, has a low battery it could be an amp that has the wrong setting it could be a loose connection from the line that's coming out of the back of the amp or the, the back of the the bass preamp so we've last few weeks we've had a lot of trouble with Eric's bass amp we're not really sure why but it's just there's noise and something something funny is happening so today Eric wasn't there but Andrew was there and we were getting a lot of crazy noise and so what we did was we plugged his bass right into uh, a DI box and then into the house. We took the amp out of the equation and what we found was the levels were really low. So, huh, that's really weird. The levels are like super low. Like I had to go to the preamp on that channel and crank it almost to 90%, which is higher than we normally need to do that. Um, normally it's just right about 12 o'clock. We had to crank this, this way, way up. So, huh, that's funny. And then we realized his tuning pedal was in the, in the equation. So we I said, well, wait a minute, let's get rid of the tuning pedal. And also we were getting crazy, the, the signal was really quiet and we we're getting all kinds of crazy buzzing. Well, as soon as we took the tuner, the tuner out of the signal chain, we went just bass direct into the, uh, to the DI, the level, all the levels in the world came back. So we had plenty of signal. We were getting really good metering on our, uh, our channel um, meters there and the, the buzz went away. So we realized that it was his tuner pedal that was adding a big amount of noise to the system. And um, something to be aware of, I don't know if it's the nine volt battery that was in that tuner pedal or the tuner pedal was just noisy, but something that we're thinking about moving forward is having a house uh, pedal board, a spare pedal board with a tuner and a really nice DI. So when somebody comes in, um, they can plug into this and we're gonna we're gonna try to control that as much as possible because from week to week to week if you're not tracking your battery levels and, and if signals are good or bad or uh, I mean levels of battery are, are, are starting to fade like that can that can cause a huge um, as we just saw this morning that can have a huge negative impact on um, the signal quality the integrity of the signal and uh, it was really it was the tuner pedal so um, I didn't test the battery. I'm just assuming that the battery was dead or that thing could have just been acting like an antenna, an RF antenna, picking up all kinds of noise. Um, but there were two things. It was picking up all kinds of noise and it was also um, not outputting a loud enough signal. So probably chalk that up to a, a low battery. But um, anyway, that's the report. Again, my name is Nate. This is the Volunteer Tech vlog for November 21st, 2015. Um, it's a Saturday. I think we're going to be sounding good for Sunday tomorrow. This is going to be our first real time doing in-ear monitors. No amplification on stage whatsoever except for an acoustic guitar. So um, I'm excited to actually do real in-ear monitors for the first time with no amplification. Last time I did sound, we kind of did. Uh, not last time I did sound, but last time I did it for Josh and Kate, we almost did a complete in-ear setup, except for the fact we had a bass amp live on the stage. And we got reports that the bass was too loud. So anyway, now I'll have complete control from the mixed position from front of house to control every level in the house. So um, I'm thinking it should be pretty good. All right, see you in the next video.